So let's find the solution, the general and the specific solution to the following differential equations. Second order derivative or second derivative uh, with respect to time of the function or is equal to 3t plus 1. So this is your differential equation and your initial conditions are going to be given in your problem. At time is equal to 0, the position is equal to 2 and at time is equal to zero, the velocity is equal to three. This is the position and this is the velocity because this is the derivative of x. So this is the velocity at a position at a time of t is equal to zero is equal to three meters per second or whatever it is you're talking about. The position is given by this other guy. The initial conditions are used later after you get the general solution. So what we need to do is look at our problem and this will be the thing that we do every time we look at it and we go through a little mental checklist. What can we do? The first thing that you should always look at when you're looking at a differential equation is, can I simply integrate it? Can it, can it be so simple just to integrate it? Because the other techniques are much more complicated, not so straightforward, and that's why the course has a bad reputation. And we'll get to those. It's not going to be that bad, I promise you. But for this one, you can look and say, yeah, I've got a derivative all by itself over here, and I've got a nice function of time. So I can integrate both sides with a, uh, uh, as a function of time and get the answer. So. Let's do that. So what I'm going to have is the integral of the second derivative of x with respect to time. I'm going to integrate with respect to time because that's what the derivative is re with respect to. And I'm going to carry that integral over to 3t plus 1 dt. And so what I'm going to end up with on the left-hand side is I'm going to take the second derivative and it's going to turn into a first derivative because I've taken one integral so I'm done on the left hand side and on the right hand side I'm going to take this simple integral so it's going to be 3 halves t squared plus an integral of 1 is just going to be t and since I'm doing an indefinite integral I'm going to have a constant of integration I'm going to label it c sub 1 because I know from previous experience that I'm going to integrate it again in a second I'm going to have a c sub 2. Now let me give you one piece of advice that maybe you've already taken from your calculus or figured out or maybe you have it. You need to get good at this trust me it'll save you a lot of time. Get in the habit of writing your pluses like this up and down like this and get in the habit of writing your t for time with a little you know, a little thing at the bottom, like this. Get in the habit of it. Write it a million times because I guarantee you if you put t squared plus plus plus, it's going to look like a mess. You're not going to know what it is. You have to get in the habit of putting uh, that in just while I'm thinking of it. A lot of people, you know, I didn't do this till halfway through college, but you know, this is the letter Z. If I were you, I would get used to writing the letter Z with a little thing across it. I used to think people were weird for doing that. But when you're writing down an integral 2z squared, if you write it really quickly, 2z squared, I mean, what is this? 2, 2, 2, or is it z, 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 or is it z, whatever, whatever? You need to write your z's with a thing like that. That is going to save you a lot of time, and it's going to save you a lot of frustration, because if you look back through your work, you will eventually make a mistake, and you eventually will not know what the heck you were doing. So even this is kind of hard to read, but I know that this is the variable, so I'm going to leave it like that. So we got 3 half t squared plus t plus constant 1. So that's a for a good first start. Now let's take this and let's integrate it again because we need to isolate the variable. So let's integrate dt, whoops, it's going to be dx, with respect to time. And we're integrating with respect to time. And on the right hand side, we're going to integrate 3 halves t squared plus t plus c1. And it's an integral over dt exactly as it is on the left hand side. So we're just integrating again just like we did for f is equal to ma. On the left hand side we're just going to get back our function that we're actually trying to calculate x. We know it's a function of time. And on the right hand side you need to do the simple integral. It's a nice polynomial integral. 3 halves over 3 t cubed. So it's 1 plus the exponent plus 1 half t squared. So you have a 1 out front, so 1 half t squared, 1 plus the exponent, plus for this constant, it's just going to be c1 times t, because that's just a constant there, plus, and you have a constant of integration, so we'll call it c sub 2 this time, because it's a totally different constant of integration than, um, than the other guy. Now what we're going to do is rewrite this, so let's rewrite it. Uh, really, you know, when you think about it, this is 3 over 1. 
So really, this 3 kind of cancels with that 3. If you want to think about it, you can flip this fraction over and multiply, and you'll see that this 3 will be on the bottom. It'll cancel. So what you're really going to have for the final answer here for the general solution is going to be uh, 1 half t cubed plus 1 half t squared plus c1 times t plus c2. So you have 1 half t cubed plus 1 half t squared plus c1 times time, time plus c2. So you see where all the t's come in handy, right in, right up with a little thingy at the end of it. It's going to help you out a lot. Uh, that's the answer. This is the general solution. So I'm going to circle this. I'm going to write down general solution. And that is the general solution. You just integrate as many times as you need. And notice that there's two constants of integration here. And that means that this is an infinite solution set, basically. There's an infinite number of ways in which this solution could be constructed. They're all going to have this stuff at the beginning because the problem is, lends itself to that. And this is they're all going to have this general form. But depending on the initial conditions that are also given here, we'll use in a second, is going to define what C2 and C1 are. It's going to define what the actual uh, specific solution is to this problem. All right, now let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have the initial conditions up here. Let me rewrite them. So I'm going to put a little thing here. So what we have is at time of zero, the position is equal to two. And at time of zero, the velocity is equal to three. So since we already have x of t right here, let's work with the first initial condition. So x of zero is equal to, and let's plug in zero here. So we have 1 half 0 cubed plus 1 half 0 squared plus c1 times 0 plus c2, just plugging in 0, and that's equal to 2. Right? So what you're going to see is what you might expect. That goes away, that goes away, that goes away. And so what you're going to have here is constant 2 is just simply equal to 2. So we've solved for one of the constants. So I'm going to kind of box this because that's important for later. Now, let's move on and use the other initial condition. And I'll switch colors there. And now we need to plug in what the velocity is at time 0. Now, the velocity, you know, you could just take your, your answer that you have here, and you could take the derivative of it and get the velocity. But since you did this problem by integration, if you just look right back up here, you'll see that you have the velocity right here. dx dt is the velocity. This is the function of it. So let's go ahead and write that down here. And what we'll have is x prime of 0 is equal to, if you look up here, 3 halves t squared. So you have 3 halves uh, 0 squared, because this is at time 0, plus t, which is 0, plus constant 1, which is from right here. And that's going to equal to whatever our initial condition said. All we did was we plugged in t is equal to 0 into the velocity equation, plugged it in there, and we set it equal to what was on the right-hand side. And so we have more cancellations uh, there. And so what we're going to find is that, well, let me write this in a different color is that c1 is equal to 3. Okay, So that's important. So now that we have that, we can write down the final answer for the specific solution. So x of t for the specific solution is equal to 1 half t squared plus, whoops, that's t cubed. 1 half t cubed from here plus 1 half t squared from here plus constant 1, which is 3 t right here plus constant 2 which is 2 and this is the uh, specific solution so I'll put specific solution notice there's no constants of integration anywhere in there 1 half t cubed plus 1 half t squared plus 3 t plus 2 this is the specific solution to this problem so this is a general form describes infinite number of solutions for that particular differential equation our initial conditions drive what our constants are. That's going to lay out a specific solution.